Welcome back. I'm recording this the Friday before the 24 hours of Daytona, which will take place Saturday. It's going to be an exciting race. There are 59 entries. There's some changes that have been made. No, this is not a racing channel, but when it comes to sports cars, there is some relevance, obviously, with models. So today I want to talk about some of the new products or new models that will more than likely come out. And the 24 Hours of Daytona, if you didn't know already, is the American Sports Cars Series race, which is that IMSA um, program. It's been around for quite some time. It really has gotten into its heyday. This is probably the best time right now for sports car racing in a very long time. And I would say that for the past probably like five years, it's been really good and it's been growing. The attendance last year for the Daytona 24 Hours was a record attendance. And I don't see that slowing it down this year. So it will be an exciting race. Now to the cars. Some of the exciting cars that I've uh, picked up on or I know they're going to be in this event we're going to start with the um, hyper cars or the gtp cars as they're called in the imsa series so that would be those um, cars that are, are coupled with a you know naturally aspirated engine or a turbo engine and an electric motor so it's a hybrid system on each one of these cars and that is per the rules of imsa so there's not a ton of new cars this year but the ones that are are pretty cool so for example we have the first one that i really want to point out which is actually not necessarily a new car but it's a new livery so proton competition is widely known more so in europe than the united states but they do participate in some of the major races in the united states again those would be for example daytona another one could possibly even though it's not on the venue this year would be sebring so and so this is really cool because the GTP car that Proton Competition is going to use is they're going to use a Porsche. So if you're familiar or you know the IMSA series, Mustang sampling used to be the livery that you would find on a Cadillac. Well, for this year, they moved over to a Porsche. And this is a customer car, so it's not a factory backed um, supported car. It is a customer car, and there are a few customer cars. And of course, you do have the Penske, which technically is a customer car, but it is representing Porsche, if you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so this livery I think is beautiful. I really like the black and gold. It's it's really nice. I would have to say it's probably my favorite Porsche livery for this year. Um, so yeah, so you have that. Next, we have the, now this car isn't actually going to be participating in the 24 hours, but I thought it would deserve an honorable mention because it will be participating later this year. And that is the Lamborghini. The Lamborghini looks fantastic. That is one beautiful livery on this car. And if you pay attention to the front of the car, just like with the other IMSA cars, something that I should have mentioned was is that IMSA has it where they want their hyper cars or GTP cars to have something recognizable to a production car. And so each one of these have these specific design elements. Now in the WEC, that would be the European um, World Endurance Championship. They don't have that mandate, but because these new GTP cars do qualify or can qualify to race in Europe. Cadillac's a really great example of that. Porsche is another great example of that. This year, BMW is going to race in WEC. So they don't have that mandate. So you can design the car any way you like. It does not have to have any styling cues or elements of a production car in the WEC. It's the direct opposite in IMSA. They want some connection to the manufacturer. And I, I, I get it. It's a way of, you know, race on Sunday, sell on Monday, that old mantra of, you know, having fans who recognize the Cadillac, for example, it looks a lot like their, their V series car. So that's the reason for it. So if you take a, take a look at the Porsche, for example, those four lights are very indicative of the um, hybrid production car they have. It's that, that Mycan, I think it is. But there's a few of them anyway that actually have it. And there's some EVs that also have those, those four headlights. You have that. With the Lamborghini, it's really obvious that they were modeling this car off of the new uh, 
Revoluto. Is that how you pronounce that? Um, and here's a picture of it. And so you can obviously see that the front headlights or the, the, the trim on it anyway, the LEDs, are, mirror each other. So there again is that reminder of the production car. And so you have that. The only one that I really don't see any kind of connection to a production car would be the BMW. Yes, it has the kidney grills and I guess it checks that box. But those are so wide and, and unique looking. You'd have to really you'd have to really think about that and, and realize that's what that's supposed to be. But anyway, so yeah, so that's the Lamborghini. Very, very, very nice livery. And so for the um, GTPs, like I said, Lamborghini Notes not participating. So the new livery or new car that you are gonna see out there is going to be just that Proton competition. More of the excitement is actually in the um, GDT class. And I had to stop and think about that because everywhere else around the world, it's just GT3. So and it's, again, it's very American to try to make everything unique to America. So that's that's really the only reason for that, to be honest with you. So anyway, the GT3 or GTD class, and they have a Pro and Am class that uses the exact same cars. Um, there are some new cars. Uh, you have the Ford Mustangs, which look very cool. Um, those in model form, those are gonna sell so fast, it's gonna be ridiculous, especially for uh, the American market for obvious reasons. It's an American car, so the lines, everything on this car is stunning. I can definitely, definitely understand the attraction to this car. I love this livery. I love the aggressive rear wing. This is a G, this is the first GT3 by Ford. So this is, well, yeah, it is. It's the first GT3 by Ford. So it's, it's very exciting and it looks great. It sounds awesome. There's some clips out there by various YouTubers and, and the IMSA channel itself that you can take a sample of, of that car. So, but yeah, it's beautiful. Those are the two um, factory backed cars, which again, I'm quoting because it's, it's Ford, but it's not Ford at the same time. It's really multi-matic with the blessings of Ford, I guess. And obviously Ford did take some participation in the design of this car. Ford also has some customer cars. And the customer cars are used by Proton Competition. So yeah, Proton Competition usually has Porsche on their side, but they're moving on to Ford and they're using Mustangs. And the liveries on those are pretty cool too. So you have that. So you're gonna have some nice variations with the liveries with the Ford. And again, if you're a collector, you definitely want the Multimatic ones for obvious reasons. They have the Ford moniker all over them and the, the, the livery looks great. Can't say that I can't say that's any better or worse than a Proton. It's just personal preference. All of them look really good. So you have some choices there. Next one is the Corvette. Yes, Corvette participated in the WEC as well as IMSA in the last few years, but because the GTE cars have gone away, that was that higher class, and yes, those cars were faster than the GT3 cars that went away. So in 2023, the last GTE cars to race was in the WEC. So in IMSA, they've been using the GT3 cars as their GTD class throughout 2023. And so GM, or yeah, GM still wanted to participate with a Corvette, so they created the GT3 car. And this one's mirrored or made off of the Z06, whereas the GTE car was more or less the Stingray. So there is some slight differences in the, in the way the cars look, especially on the side with those ground effects. There's definitely, there's definitely a difference in those. And some would argue that this livery doesn't look as good as the previous one. You're gonna some people on the opposite side. Personally, for me, I do like the GTE version a little bit better. It's just, it was wider. All GTE cars a little bit wider and just to, to me, it's just more aggressive. This one's not bad at all. The thing is, is we all win. We get a version of the GTE and the um, GT3. So there's really no complaints there. But the liveries look really nice. They do have that Corvette yellow and it looks fantastic so you have those two and just like with the ford backed this is the gm backed which technically really isn't gm 
It is Pratt & Miller, which has been working with GM on their Corvettes forever, but you really have to say it's the Pratt & Miller team, which technically is the GM team, but it's not at the same time. Um, and all I mean by that is that you're buying these products, from, you're buying your cars from, from, G, from, from GM. You're not, it's not GM just saying, here's our car and we're representing it and, and all the GM execs show up at races and things like that. They still will, but anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling. So anyway, so you have the two yellows. Then there are customer cars. And so the customer cars would be from AWA. I should have done my research to know what AWA is, but anyway. But you have the two AWA um, liveries and the yellow looks really aggressive. It's not the same shade as the Pratt & Miller car. I actually like this shade of yellow a little bit better. It has almost like a, a more of a dark or a mustard look to it, but it looks really cool. I really have to say, I'm really liking that green and, and, and orange or red or orange color. I really like that. And I think it's more so just because we've seen yellow Corvettes for so many years, it's, it's just become a little bit tired. So I definitely do like that color. I think that's a really, really nice color. So, I believe that is really it for the cars. This was a short uh, video just to talk about that. It's just something that I just wanted to share, um, especially for those who may not be into necessarily watching races, but you do enjoy collecting the cars. Um, I would hope most of us are paying attention to the races, but because they are. If you've never seen the 24 Hours of Daytona, it is a very exciting race. Um, it's the first race of the season for sports car racing in general. I'm not including like the buy, for example, but just the, specifically to what I say sports cars, prototypes with a combination of GT cars. So, and so yeah, I hope you do watch it. It's going to be very exciting. If you're not in the U.S., you can go to IMSA.com and see probably, pretty much 99% of the race. If you're in the U.S., you have a combination of things. You have local television, which would be the, I believe it's MBD, NBC Sports. And then you also can see the full race on Peacock if you have a subscription to that as well. Please like and subscribe. That is the best way I'm going to know that you're enjoying these videos. I am going to have the comparison of the Mini Champs and Norev Porsche 911 GT3s for my next video. So stay tuned for that. I appreciate your time and I'll see you next time.